that we turned out bad. But I look at my own life, and from a boy all the way up, there's a lot of things if I could go back and redo, I would. But like my nephew, Nelson Riley, told me one time, he said, Uncle, he said, we dropped a gallon of milk. We was going over, was camping over on the river, fishing one night. And, and that, that, they had a run of dairy and had fresh milk. And he had a gallon of that boy, it was ice cold. And boy, you can't beat that fresh whole milk from the dairy. And he sat up on the tailgate of my truck, and it, I don't know, the lid wasn't on something, he dropped it. And, uh, and it, it didn't break, but he spilt about half of it. And the man out there whining about it, he said, Uncle, he said, don't be crying over spilt milk now. But anyway, you know, <clears throat> we talk about we talk about praying. We talk about a lot of places in, in the Word of God. It talks about prayer and supplication. How many of you know what supplication is? I like, I like, to, I like to go and look and see what, words, what the, the meaning of a lot of words are. I mean, I'm, that's just something that I do. I look up what they mean in, in the English, in my dictionary. I look up what they mean, where they're used in, my, in the concordance. And, uh, but uh, I, like, I, like, I like to know what the words uh, mean in English. And prayer, let me, from what the uh, Webster Dictionary says, pray, pray. It says to talk or recite, this is Webster now, to talk or recite a set of words to God in worship or in asking for something to ask or beg for seriously. That's prayer. We pray. We pray. All right. Prayer, no definition of prayer, the act of praying. We just seen what pray was. Now the act of praying, something prayed for, another definition. A humble and sincere request to God and prayerful, prayerful now, another word, prayerful, the definition of that is praying often. Prayerful. Are you prayerful in this? Are you been, have you been prayerful in uh, praying for revival? Are you been prayerful in praying for this or praying for that? We're praying often. You know, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, in, in that verse, it says, pray without ceasing. You know, I've heard that all taken out of context and all preached and taught wrong. Praying without ceasing does not mean with it, what it means is intermittingly. Pray without stopping. Pray without just everything's going well now and I quit praying. No, it doesn't mean people say you're supposed to be, be praying all the time. You know, I, I don't know if anybody could do that. I've been in some situations, man, that I, I didn't didn't have time to pray. I didn't th think about praying for keeping my mind on what was happening. You know, <clears throat> pray without ceasing. They don't had a friend. I'm not. I didn't have. He wasn't a friend of mine, but he was a co-worker. He lived up in Iowa, South Carolina. That's up up toward back up in the behind Anderson, back out of on the the west side of the upstate. And uh, I, I won't call his name because I'm being recorded now, and they might get out. But. Uh, he was he was he was he was a tough codger man uh, down at Allied Chemical. We was building that back down there in the '60s, early '60s. Had an instrument, little instrument booth out there. The instrument folks had their tools and stuff in there, and then the uh, pipe fitters, and the plumber, the sheet metal, and, and electricians all. And uh, at the time, I was working with inst uh, inst with the instrument crew. And, uh, but I didn't see this, but another guy was telling me, he went up to the door there one day and he asked this guy back there that keep, keeps the, uh, the tool room and keeps the supply room. He said, hey, Doug says, have you got a real sharp pocket knife? And he said, you know, people carry a good knife. They just ain't going to loan it out to just anybody. They don't know what they're going to cut. And he said, well, well, what you want with it? He pulled his shirt up, up like this right here. And a, a pistol ball that went in on this side and it lodged under the skin right here. <laughs> he, and old Doug, that's just what he kept. He just he just passed completely out, <laughs> hit the floor. <laughs> so I can't too much say too much about that. But and uh, but he did get uh, he did get the knife and he and, and he stood. They said he stood right there and cut that and popped that bullet ball out. And he was working up at Kim Strand up there where Brother Richard worked at, retired from. As, as uh, Kim Strand in Montesano and in the Solution, all kind of stuff. But anyway, that same guy was up there one day, and this fellow by the name of Ed Nixon. Uh, he was 
somebody that I would like to have been like him. I didn't know what what he had that I, I didn't have. And we'd sit down for lunch, and he was on a crew. Uh, I wasn't with his crew, but we'd sit down. Some of us we sat down together, and he'd sit over there by himself, and he'd pull his hat off and lay it down, and before he'd get his lunch box open, and he'd bow his head and he'd pray. And I, I thought that was I thought that was something. He'd sit there in front of all them people and do that. I mean, he didn't make no. He didn't want to say, "Y'all be quiet. I'm gonna pray." He just moved over to the side. And then when he got through praying, he'd come back. And I always wonder, boy, I, 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 he, he just was a good-natured person. I never saw him upset. And I always wanted to. I'd like to always. I thought I'd always want to be like Ed Nixon. But anyway. Uh, John, well, I think the guy that was had uh, popped this bullet out, got shot in the stomach, cut his bullet out himself. <clears throat> he uh, was up there. He was welding up on a scaffold up in one of the rooms down there, welding up there, and he, and he started having chest pains. And he just throwed his welding hood down and come off that scaffold down on the floor and lay down and, and, and said, I'm dying, I'm dying, and so they got, uh, uh, they called for the uh, first aid for Monsanto first aid, and he was saying, send Ed Nixon to me, somebody get Ed Nixon to come up here, somebody get Ed Nixon to come up here, and by the time Ed Nixon was off somewhere, probably on a couple of different floors away, and because he knew something about Ed Nixon that he wanted Ed Nixon to pray for him. Anyway, so Ed got by the time Ed got up there, the EMS were there, and the, the, all of the Monsanto uh, safety personnel was around him, and Ed couldn't get in there. And so they rushed him on to the hospital. He said, "I see you. Nobody could have couldn't have no visitors." So about it was about uh, maybe a week he got out of uh, ICU, and uh, Ed went over to see him. And when he walked in, Dad, you know what, John. I, well, his name is John Duckett. I'm going to tell you anyway, John Duckett. And uh, he looked, walked, just stuck his head in and said, John, is you sure? He said, hey, Ed, I don't need you now. I'm okay. That's what he said. I'm okay. I don't need you now, Ed. I'm okay. You know, but you know what? I heard later on that he died f from a brawl in a pool room. Somebody busted his skull with a cue stick, killed him right there in the pool room. It wasn't too many years after that. We wonder where and what all of these, what's, where he's at. You know, if he didn't accept Jesus Christ as Savior, I know where he's at. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> beseech, another word, beseech. And we see that a lot. Romans 12, 1, it says, Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And then if you go over into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, Paul is saying, you know, he says, God has allowed me, I've asked the Lord three times to remove this thorn in my flesh because I've got that flesh. Jesus told him, he said, you've got that there because I don't want you to, and I'm putting, using my word, I don't want you to get so heavenly minded because of, I've used you and you've shown, and you've showed people, the, had it pinned down, the things that I've said that you would do for me. He told what he told uh, Paul, he said, I've got great and mighty things. I'm going to show you what you're going to have to suffer for my namesake. And he said, Paul said, I, I besought, that's the uh, past tense of beseech, I besought the Lord three times to remove this flesh. And, and Jesus said, no. He said, no. He said, uh, you're strong in, in your weakness. And so I'm not going to do it. And Paul said he, he never done it. But that, you know, beseech was not a command or charge. charge. It was ask in a begging way. Paul asked him, he said, I beseech you, therefore, my beloved brother, and be you, uh, not that, I'm getting off, crossed on another verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Paul said, therefore, my beloved brother, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor's not in vain in the Lord. But Paul was saying, I beseech you, I'm asking you in a begging way, 
to present your body as a living sacrifice. I'm not commanding you to. And see, a lot of times people, we get, we get mixed all up. And people command, you can't drive somebody, you can't force somebody. But he said, I'm, I'm asking you in a begging way. And beseech has there several different meanings and it's used in, it's used in Scripture. But the two, the two uh, verses that I just used now was, I'm asking you in a begging way. To, to to do so and so and to do so and so. All right, now this is another one right here that uh, supplication, prayer and supplication. Supplication is to talk, pour out our hearts as to what, how, and why. What, how, and why of, of any situation. We pour out our heart. You know, it's really, it boils right down to supplication is what, what did we first say? I pour out our heart. Is to get something off our chest. When we pray, many places, by prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, we know what prayer is to talk or recite a, a set of words to God in worship or in asking for something. To ask or beg for seriously. All right, when we supplicate, we go down and say, Lord, I, I, I wish, I want you to, I need to get this amount of money. Send this amount of money in because, you know, I've got this payment that's coming up and I don't want to be late because I'm a deacon in the church and I don't want to be late and have a bad testimony. And we go on and we go on and we go on. We ask the Lord, how about I want you to make so-and-so well because he's so-and-so, he's got a family to take care of or so-and-so. I remember I had an uncle one time. Well, he, he's, he ain't my uncle no more because he, he's gone. He's dead. It's his mother. He smoked camel cigarettes all the time. His mother kept saying, Ray, said, I, I want you to quit. Why don't you quit smoking, please? Why don't you quit smoking? He said, well, Mama, I got to die of something. And every time he lied, he, I mean, smoking the house. He disrespectful to his mother. And uh, he'd light up one in the house and he'd go to getting it out. And he said, well, I'm going to drive another nail in my coffin. And so what happened to him? He'd come down with lung cancer. And his sister-in-law's, they were from the group that believes in, I mean, that, uh, that they, they, that, of healing. Now, I believe, I believe in healing, but I believe that Jesus Christ the one that's going to do the healing, and he's going to heal you according to his will. And they, both of them sisters, his sister-in-laws, uh, said, well, we're not going to let cancer get Ray. We're going we to pray and we're going to keep cancer for getting Ray and, and taking him on out, but it didn't, it didn't work. He, the Lord took him on out and the thing about it is uh, I heard and uh, his wife told me that he did he did get saved I remember I don't remember one of the preachers from here at the time went down and visited him because his wife came to church here a good while off and on when somebody picked her up she couldn't drive but uh, and she said that uh, one of the preachers from here came and visited him after he got sick and uh, I, I'd visit and talk to him and he was gasping, fighting for air <gasps> all the time. And, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't help but think about, well, Mom, I got to die with something anyway. And every time he'd light up in the house, Dad, she'd say, Ray, why don't, you, why don't you put that out? Why don't you go outside? And he'd go, he wouldn't. He'd, I'm driving another nail in my coffin. And, blah, 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 and that, that's about what happened. But anyway... Supplication is getting getting a load off our chest. You know, you know. Let me read this to you. Jesus said in Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty, for all these things. You know, if we know about what we're talking about, for food and for raiment and for uh, the things that we ask for. And he said, Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 12, verse 30, he said, For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father, capital, your Father, capital of your heavenly Father, knoweth that ye have need of these things. And also, and he said, Heavenly Father, know you have need of these things. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, it says, For your heavenly Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. He knows what we have need of before we ask. And that's why we, we pray in suppl supplication. We get a load off our chest. Lord, this is what I need it, and this is why I need it. And see, God already knows. Our Heavenly Father, according to the Scripture, said, Jesus said, He already knows what you need before you even ask Him. But yet we go ahead and we pray according to will. You know, I remember my first wife, she was laying down in, uh, with cancer. And when I found out she had cancer in, I think it was May of... Uh, 
1999, I found out she had cancer, and, and that really set my, me and my kids and all back. But I terribly, and I, and I pray, Lord, I, I prayed, and I don't rem ever remember not praying that if when I finished praying, I said, Lord, if it be your will. And that's the way that we should pray according to his will. Over in uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible tells us that we don't know how we ought to pray, how to, to pray as we ought. We don't know how. And he said that's why the Holy Spirit, that's his job. He prays, the Holy Spirit prays for us. And said, because we don't even know how to pray. And see, then that kind of throws another light on so-and-so. He's a real prayer or she's a real prayer warrior. Who's the prayer warrior? The Holy Spirit is. You know, we bum fuzzle around, flop around, and but the Holy Spirit knows what we should get and what we should have. There's been a lot of things I prayed for that I, I never got. You know, I, I, I say this, and people don't, they, they, they kind of raised the eyebrow. I've never had a prayer. I don't believe I've ever had a prayer that God didn't answer. It may be no. And it may be yes. Just because I got what I asked for, that don't mean that God didn't answer my other prayers that I didn't get what he wanted. Because there's things that I, had, had, if I had got what I wanted and prayed for, and I, I'd, I'd, have been in, I'd have been in bad shape. I'd have been in bad shape. I know when I, my wife, uh, first wife, when she was laid off a couple of weeks before, she, well, a couple of days, maybe six, eight days before she passed away, and she told me she'd carry along, she'd find a good woman to get married again. And, uh, but at that time, you know, I didn't have, Sadie knows what I'm talking about, maybe Tommy knows what you're talking about, and some of the rest of you, I don't know if anybody, I don't think anybody ever, we've, we've been down that road. And uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a rough road. And she told me, she said, Carol, don't you find a good woman and get married again? And, well, you know, that broke my heart. You know, I said, I, to me, I still had her, but the doctor, she wanted the doctor to let her die. She wanted to die, and the doctor said, you will be, you will, uh, this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and uh, when it first, she first started, said, in the 10 days, she said, you, you'll, you'll go. And it come right down to it with the ninth or the 10th day that she passed away. I was holding one hand, and the nurse was holding the other hand when she, when she passed away. And I, and uh, then I, you know, I still, still wasn't, then about, after about 21 months, something, well, it wasn't 21 months, it was about a year, about 10 months, I, loneliness began to set in, and, you know, I tried to go to places and to get away, and maybe I was running from it, I don't know, and i go to some of the places that we even went, but couldn't, couldn't get no peace about that. But anyway, uh, I began to pray, and uh, one of the, if I call this girl's name, Linda, uh, Sadie would know who I'm talking about. Nobody else would know Linda. She played basketball with Sadie. I mean, no, she didn't play, what she, she didn't play, Sadie played basketball, might have been a cheerleader or something, but whatever. Anyway, Sadie knows who I'm talking about. Well, she told me, she said, Carol, she wrote me a letter, and she found out about it. Had a classroom. She said, "Carol, I want, I'm going I want to, I'm be praying for you." Said I lost my husband about three years before I lost my wife, and said I was going to be praying for you. And a lot of these first things and holidays and all coming up going to be your first is going to be rough. So I'm praying for you. And uh, and she said, "Whatever you do, don't make no mistakes. There's worse things than being lonely." But anyway. I need to hear now, but we when we pray, Lord, if it be your will, and I begin to pray, I begin to pray, Lord, if it's your will for me to have a, another wife, I said, don't, and I, that was my prayer, don't let me mess up. When you see, I didn't mess up. <laughs> I'll say I didn't mess up. God's been good to me with that, real good to me, better than I deserve. But anyway, that was her prayer too. She wouldn't mess up. She lost her husband about three years before my wife passed away, and I think the third, second time I dated, I asked her, I said, uh, it might have been the third. The first, the second time I asked her, I asked her, dated, I asked her if she, if she died, she knows she's going to heaven. She said she did. And so I asked her to tell me about it, and I didn't, I didn't question that. The next time I dated, had a date, the third time I dated, I asked her, I said, you need to be praying about whether the Lord have us seeing each other. She said, I already have. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> but anyway, so here we are. Four months from the first date, we got married. 
and I've been happily married ever since. If we make it till December the 1st, it'll be 20 years that she put up with me. And God's been good to me, been very good to me. But anyway, you know, we, there's so many uh, uh, examples in the, in the, in the Bible from for people praying and supplicating. Uh, Hannah was one. You remember back on 1 Samuel, Hannah? That she decided she wanted to have a, a child and wanted to have a son, and she and she couldn't have a child. So they, him, her, and her husband El Cano would go up to the temple every year to the feast of and to the to temple worship, and they'd have prayer. Eli was the priest at the time, and she'd go and pray, and she said, "Lord, said give me give me a son. I want a son. I want a son." Kept on and kept on. In fact, God gave her a son. Called you know Hannah said told God he said if you'll give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And the Bible tells us whenever God gave her a son, and whenever she weaned little Samuel, she took him to the, up to the, to the temple for Eli, and, and he, that's where he was raised, right in the temple. Every year she'd go, and just like she'd been going, but she'd take him a little coat. She prayed for that son. And, you know, one of the things, that Solomon's prayer for wisdom, if we was to go over and take time for us to First Kings chapter 3, verse, I think I will. First Kings chapter 3, verse 5. Through 15, 1 Kings, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, chapter 3. All right, I got it. 1 Kings, chapter 3, beginning verse 5. It says, in Gibeon, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this thy great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is is this day. Well, that's what Solomon said. You've given him a son, and that's so he was talking about himself. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. He was 18 years old when he began to reign, uh, Solomon was. He, but he says, I am a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted, nor multitude. Give therefore thy servant, he's talking to himself, give me, give, thy, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. All thy days, and if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And then, O oh Solomon, he woke up. And you know, that's, that, that's Solomon's prayer for wisdom. You know, that's what I pray for wisdom all the time, man. I, we need wisdom. I need wisdom. We need wisdom. You need wisdom. We need wisdom in raising our children. We need wisdom in what we do. And, and, and God give us wisdom to write. My prayer is always, God, give me wisdom to rightly divide your word. I want wisdom. I want understanding of your word. You know, if I could, I'm, one day I may preach on uh, three things that's very important. It's, it, it's in uh, the book of Proverbs. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge is the what. Wisdom is the how. And understanding is the why. And you can put that anywhere you want to. Knowledge of salvation. How, what, I need knowledge on salvation. I need to know how to be saved. I need it. I need, and then it goes right back over to Romans chapter 12, chapter 10, verse 9. It says, Thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised it from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right? How do I be saved? And, and understanding. Give me wisdom. How? I got a call on him. Why? Do I, why? I don't want to go. To, I don't want to go to hell. Jesus said, 
in, for, in John chapter 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes it should not perish but have everlasting life. We need wisdom, and we need wisdom. We need, but anyway, that's for another, for another time. We need to have wisdom in, in our dealings. And Lord, give me wisdom to understand, to rightly divide the word of truth. I'm going to tell you this, rightly dividing the word. The scripture, was, the Old Testament was not given to the Gentiles. It was given to the Jews. Now, if you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, I think it must be down about verse, getting on down about probably verse uh, 12, or somewhere along in there. It says, it talks about from first one all the way down to that. It talks about the, the things that when, when God, he wiped them, wiped out Israel. I mean, the bunches of them. 23,000 one day and thousands and thousands one day. And, and it says that these things were given for our examples. That we might not go against and disobey God. You know... And we get over, all scriptures give them inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. And Father, we can get everything, the instruction book, is instru and for correction. You know, a lot of things that I had down wrong, and I got, it has been corrected by this book, through this book. Not what, my, what a man tells me, but what this book says. When I hear something come from this pulpit that I don't, that, that kind of seems strange for me or anywhere else. You don't have to listen too far on the radio or the TV, and it's going a lot of things going to sound strange. But you know, I I, I want to get in. I want to make sure. The, you know what the Bible says? Count every man a liar, but God be true. That's over in Romans chapter three, verse four. And the verses before that, he said, the the word was given to the Jews. The oracles of God were given to the Jews. And then it talks on and it says. We don't, we, it, it doesn't, the covenant, when God made a covenant, a covenant, what is a covenant? Covenant is a, like a contract. It's an agreement with the Jews. And he said this, con this contract is going to be binding for life. For the whole, for, from, from now on, for the Jews. But it's not talking about for you and I. We, we're, not, we're, not, uh, we're not the Jews. We're not Israel. And the church is not Israel. The church is this, the, the church, the all born again folks, it's in the church. Those are the believers. It's in the church. They make up the church. And the Jews now, if they're going to get saved, if they're going to be make up that part of that church, they got to come the same way I did and everybody else. It is a personal thing. It's like I got. We got a neighbor that it. Uh, she's dying with cancer. We didn't know that till. We knew she was in bad shape, so he came over. He'd been talking to me because ain't nobody want nobody. He ain't got nobody to talk to. He comes over there and talks to me, and I've talked to him several times about his salvation. And uh, have, have you ever been? He said, "Yeah, I've, I've been saved, raised up in North Carolina, around Cherokee, Bryson City, back up in days. He's a, a true back in the mountains, and he's up probably he's 65, 66 now. And uh, he, he, I told him, I said, Terry, I said." If you die today, do you know you go to heaven? He said, yeah. I said, how do you know that? He said, well, I've been saved. I've been born again. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. I said, is that going to get you into heaven? He said, supposed to. Well, he's right. It's supposed to. You know, I, you know, I, I used to say, I quit this. I used to say, there ain't nobody in this church knows if they're saved. But me and God, you and God, you and God, you and God. But you know, I, I've quit that. You might be saved, but you don't know it. You know, can disagree with me if, if you want to. But if you go over into First, Second Peter, it talks about the knowledge, all, chapter one, all the way down, and then it says, if these things, if these things are not, if not in you. You will so, and if, and if you don't do these things, what he's talking about, he said that you will soon forget that you was ever redeemed. I've been dealing with a neighbor. I passed to come up and dealt with him. I, I told him, I said, man, I've done all I can do. And I said, the man, he believes everything that I said. He says, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose on Easter day. And he said, I, I believe that. His blood was shed for me. I said, you believe that? He said, yeah. I said, if you die today, do you know you go to heaven? He said, I hope I will. Never could get him to see, put his faith. I believe the man is saved, but he don't have no assurance of his salvation. You see what I'm saying? A person can be saved, but they don't have any assurance of their salvation. 
And that, to me, that would be a, a, a very serious thing to go through life. Fearing, am I going to am I, am I have I done enough? Am I going am I, am I, am I to make it? Am I going to, you know, sometimes, I mean, I, I get sometimes feeling, boy, everything been going good, man. I've been doing this, doing good, and I've, I ain't cussed, nothing. I, <laughs> well, you know something. Uh, you know, Owen Proverbs said, feed me food with con which is convenient, lest I be full and, and cursed. Uh, I'll be poor and, and take, the, take my Lord... Take the Lord God's name in vain, and you, you got to you got to take that into context. What's talking about that don't mean going out here and swearing and stuff. That's not talking about that. Now that, that you shouldn't be doing that either. But if I'm a Christian and I tell you, I tell the world, and I am, I, I'm a saved man, but I am a saved sinner. I still sin every day. I know, but there's one thing about it. I know how when I do sin, the Holy Spirit convicts me, and I do like Proverbs twenty-eight thirteen says, where well, if thou, First John one nine says, if thou, if you confess your sins, He is faithful and, to, and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Twenty-eight Proverbs twenty-eight thirteen, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and turn away shall have, how he shall be blessed. Confess it. And it's saying, I, I confess my sin. And sometimes I may, I may not do it right then. Or when I do something, have a bad thought. I hope none of y'all don't have that. Uh, or you hear something and you, 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 you want to hear a little bit more of it. Or you see something, you want to see a little bit more of it. And you ought to be doing that. And sometimes later on, down the Lord, I say, you know, Lord, I, I, you know, I, 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 did, I, I was stupid. And I say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. And... Uh, I don't I don't premeditate sin. What I mean by that? Well, I'm I'm addicted to the bottle, and you know I'm plan on going out and and, and having living it up. Then I'm gonna come back and and then I'm gonna confess my sin and get it. Well, you oh oh that ain't gonna work. Now, yeah, but when I go off and, and go out and something, I run up on somebody that I know or something and. I, I, I be led into something that I know at the time and then I know it's wrong then I confess it but I'm not going to sit down here and, and, and premeditate something and then go out and, and do it and say well then when you do it say well, well your Bible, the Bible said Lord if I confess it you're going to forgive it Just forgive me of all my sins and cleanse from all unrighteousness but it ain't going to work it ain't going to work I was wanting to get into a uh, I ain't got I ain't got enough time. I like preaching now. We we, we, we don't I ain't gonna keep you over time there. But I, I would I'd like to uh uh you know old uh, David, he prayed a prayer for for Solomon, his son. Because oh, David was knew he was getting old and the Lord had already anointed Solomon who's gonna take David's place. And if you go if we were to take the time to go to uh Psalm seventy two, that's the prayer that David made for his son Solomon. He prayed for, for him. And, 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 and uh, Solomon even prayed for himself. He prayed, Lord, I, I need wisdom. I need to do all these things that, that, that if you've asked me to do. And he, he prayer of dedication. Uh, I'd like to have read that, but that's a lot of reading. That's about uh, 30, 31 verses. That's in 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter... <clears throat> Eight, starting with about the twenty-second verse, twelfth uh, verse, I believe it is, twenty-second verse, all the way down to fifty-three. And but I, I, I'll, 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 I'll try. I'll go part of the way, maybe. But anyway, <clears throat> after after Solomon, I won't. I don't think I am. I'm, I won't have time. But Solomon, after he. He prayed and asked God to give him wisdom, and God gave him wisdom. He blessed him, and God told him what all that he was going to do for him, and how he was going to take care of him, how he was going to let him be over all of. Uh, he was going to be the, the 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 in other words, the most intelligent, the strongest man with war uh, with with uh, armies and the such like that. He was going to be the strongest. And but you know what? In, over in the verse in the Psalm, not Psalm, but um, First Kings. I'm there. I can get to it right quick. I want to. I'll tell you how. 
what happened to Solomon. Solomon's heart turned away. F- he turned away from God. It says, I'm going to read this to you. It's in Second King, uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, beginning of verse 1. It said, but, God, but King Solomon loved many strange women. That's what got that old deer this morning I killed in trouble. He loved many strange women. He was out on the prowl looking for strange women. He run up on a 270 bullet right there. And, uh, so that, that, he, he got himself in a mess. He's hanging in my cooler now. But it says, But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord, which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them. Neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 said, Therefore to him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest you fall. Yeah, you know, famous last words. I'd never do that. That won't happen to me. He said, Therefore. To him that thinketh he stands, take heed lest he fall. And he had seven, listen now, oh, and he had 700 wives. Boy, can you imagine that? 700 wives. Whew. Princes and 300 concubines. So he, he was messed up with 1,000 women. Boy, he had lost, he had, he lost his ever-loving mind, hadn't he? Boy, he, he, was, he, was, he was on his way down. And it said, for it, And he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. He fell, he slipped, he thought he could, he had all this power, and God had told him what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make you I'm gonna you're gonna be the richest person, you're gonna have the most you're gonna have the most knowledge, you're gonna have all these things. And I, and he had all the wealth he had and, and God would bless him and he just, just got careless. And that's what happens a lot of times. The Bible tells us we need to not be weary in well doing. I told in Galatians chapter six, verse nine, be not weary and well let us not be weary and well doing, for we shall reap in due time if we faint not. That goes along with pray without ceasing. And then let us not be weary and well doing, for we shall reap in due time if we faint not. Well, let's don't give up. Let's don't quit praying. I, I, I still pray for little Kylie. You know, I got her I still got her name in the back of my Bible right here, because I never could keep her name right. Right there, it's got in there. Kylie Sherwood, K-Y-L-I-E. Miss Bonnie gave me that probably a couple of years ago. And I said, I want, I want to know, I want to know that, I want to call, I don't want to say the Sherwood's granddaughter, I want to call her Kylie. But God knew who I was talking about when I said, he knew who I was talking about, I didn't, but I want to make it personal. And I never met her, but we prayed for her. She, Martha, my wife, I tell you, we pray for her, it's every day. We pray for her and pray for her parents. We we'll pray for a lot of you. Pray, matter of fact, every one of you. Every one of you. We, every one of you. I sat in the deer stand this morning praying. I sat in the deer stand yesterday morning. I pray. It takes me a long time to pray. I pray for the folk. You know, I, I don't know how to say this, but I think sometimes prayer is used as a byword. I've heard people tell other people, said, just, you, just, you just pray and everything will get all right. You just pray. I, I don't find that nowhere in my Bible. I don't find that nowhere in my Bible. I do find in that when we pray, we know that we have our petitions before our Heavenly Father. And then I can be content. You know why? Because he's going to answer that according to his will. He's going to heal. He would just like many places in the New Testament where it talks about, Lord, I know you can do this if you will. The, the, the blind men. They said, We know that you can heal us if you will. We know that. 
when he brought the paralytic man in to let him down through the roof, tile in the roof. And uh, Jesus said, what can I do? What would you have me to do for you? He already knew what he, what he would, could do, would going to do, what they wanted. And you know, it, it's so many, just, just pray and everything's going to be all right. Me and you as Christians, and we know what the, what we're, what the, what the Word says, we know that it will be all right according to His Word. It might not be what we want, but it's going to be all right according to His Word. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. Remember Daniel? Uh, over in uh, Daniel, I believe it was, uh, when he, Darius was the king at the time, and the princes, the Bible says the princes and the presidents and the governors, uh, the King Darius' right-hand men, they were jealous because Darius went to uh, Daniel for advice. He went for Daniel to, and tell him what he dreamed and tell him all these things. And Daniel was the only one to give him an answer. All his big shots, they couldn't give him no answer. And uh, they was accused one time, he accused him one time, said, you tell me, you're telling me just what you want me to hear, but you're not telling me the truth. And so they was, Darius was going to put Daniel up over all of them, and they, they got a little bit jealous. So they got together, and they said, hey, man, how are we going, how are we going to trap this fellow, Daniel? And one of them said, well, we ain't no way we're going to trap, the only way we're going to trap him and catch him and get rid of him is we're going to have to catch him in something when he's praying to his God. About his God. So they got together and went to the old king, uh, Darius, and they said, Hey, so let's make a 30, I want you to make, we got a, a 30 uh, day pack here, agreement. If any man or any person has been, is caught praying to any other God or any other person besides you for the next 30 days, they'd be cast into the lion's den. And boy, Darius, he got all big puffed up. and He said, Man, look at that. I'm the, I'm the king. I get what I want. And he said, Okay, he signed it. So they go back and they wait on old Daniel because they know what Daniel was going to do. The Bible said, just like Daniel knew this would happen, but Daniel didn't go out on the street, out on the street, say, "Yeah, I am, boys, I'm going to pray anyway." He didn't do that. He went. The Bible says he went back. He got into his chamber. I looked at what his chamber means. Chamber means my grandmother used to say when my aunt come down from New York, she had a bedroom there, and she said, "Don't y'all don't get caught. Don't go back there in uh, Maynard's chamber now." That was, a, that was a bedroom. And it, I looked it up what it meant, and, and it said it's, it's a, the loft. In the con, a concordance, it said it's the loft. I guess maybe what, what we might say is an attic. A loft, most likely a bedroom. He said he went to his chamber, opened up his window, got on his knees and knelt, looking toward Jerusalem and prayed three times a day like he always had. And so they took old, they took it to Darius and they said, hey, this fellow, we called him up there praying to, praying to his God. And since he done signed that degree, Darius, he didn't want to do it, but he done it for his own sake, throwed him in the line to him. We know the rest of the story. God took care of that situation. You know, God is good to us. Even in the bad times, man, we can't... They, they, Right now, things the things now that are bad, they're bad, but the things 10 years ago, 15 years ago, even longer than that, that was good, they're bad now, and the things were bad then is good now. It's all fouled up. It's all messed up. Messed up bad. But one day, I know, and I got faith, and I believe that the Lord's coming back. It might be before we go home. It may be before the sun comes up in the morning. I don't know when it's going to be, but I believe thing times are getting closer and closer. But I do this one do know this one thing that today is one day closer than it was yesterday. Tomorrow will be one day closer than it is today. And the Bible tells us to occupy till he comes. Occupy till he comes. Father, we thank you for your word. And Father, I just thank you for I know the things, maybe I was a little here or there bouncing around, but I pray, Lord, you might uh, let these folks' ears hear. And, Father, they might understand, help us to understand, help us to have that desire to know your word and know the truth and the power that's in your word. Father, I pray now that you'd be with us as we go into our prayer time. Pray that you'd have your will and your way in each situation in our lives and the ones we pray for, the many things that we could pray for. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I'd like to go ahead and... Uh,